Um, what do you think are the key things that, that companies need to consider where they're looking at delivering services and work in this way? Yeah, so uh, number one is always going to be the do it properly, isn't it? You know, make it, not make it look like it is, it make it actually is what it is. You know, you can't, I, I don't personally think you can, you can mould a, time and materials engagement into an outcome-based arrangement. So it actually is only appropriate for the ones that really do fit in that way. So it's it's looking at looking at the whole scenario, isn't it? The commercial reality, it's what we always say, the commercial reality of the arrangement, um, they kind of really need to heavily scrutinize it. That it's the same as when we're talking about I-35 in general. It's not just in the contract. You can't just relabel it. Um, if, if you're providing labor, you're providing labor. Um, and I think this is where HMRC are getting quite hot on it again. And this isn't to, to put people off looking at working in this way, um, but, but don't think it's going to just go under the radar. Um, you know, they, they put in one of their manuals. Um, if the reality is same, same thing, if the reality of the contract is a provision of labor, that's not going to stop R35 from applying. So, you know, Basically, make sure you do it properly. I don't know if you were aware because what did we we saw the compliance letters. It was probably a month or month back now, and um, the compliance letters that went out um, to the banking and finance industries, um, basically fishing for information, saying you know what are your processes? Are you doing everything properly? Um, but one of the things that they touched on there is. Are you delivering any outsourced services? If you are, how are you doing it? Or are you receiving any outsourced services? If so, how? So they're basically saying, are you, Mr. Own Client, receiving outsourced services? If so, we want you to tell us how. So it just shows that they are aware that this is happening. Um, they obviously want to pick up on the ones that aren't doing it properly. So if you are doing it, just make sure you're doing it properly. And I think that's that's kind of what we're always trying to get at, isn't it? If if it looks like it's uh, labour supply, time and materials, what's like a duck, quack's like a duck, is that what they say? It is a duck. <laughs> yeah. Kind, kind of the point that I'm getting at is, um, you know, you just have to, I think it was, they said something about the systems and processes that you use around off payroll um, and, the, and the processes you're using if any of any of the services are outsourced. So, so they're looking into it. Um, so you, you just... Yeah, like I said, you need to make sure it's you're doing it properly. Therefore, the point I made at the beginning, I look at it as in you're starting up a new business. It's just the easiest yeah. way of doing it. I'm not saying you have to start up a new business. I know a lot of people did actually say, do you know what, we're going to start from scratch, new limited company. Um, but if you look at it as in what would you do if you were setting up a new business, you wouldn't just quickly decide it in your director's board meeting, download a statement of work contract offline and then send that to your client and then contractors are there on Monday, you would do it all properly. And then that's obviously where insurance implications is something to consider. Same way as if you set up a new company, you would go and get insurance for that company. So I think that's that's kind of where Kingsbridge has been supporting some of our partners that are saying, you know what, we're looking at this now, or we've already moved into this area, or we've been doing it for years. We're then trying to support them with the insurance side of things, making sure that they're covered.